You're listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with a registered patent attorney, Dr. Adam Diamond, founder of Diamond Patent Law, the number one source for securing your intellectual property needs. Now, here's your host, Adam Diamond. Hello and welcome to the Patenting for Inventors podcast, episode 94, Means Plus Function Claim Language. My name is Adam Diamond, a registered patent attorney and founder and owner of Diamond Patent Law in Los Angeles, California. I can be contacted through my website at diamondspatentlaw.com, that's D-I-A-M-E-N-T, patentlaw.com, or call me at 424-281-0162. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a special way to claim your invention. I probably should have talked about this way back when I talked about claim drafting, but I don't think I did, or if I did, I probably glossed over it. And if you haven't listened to all my episodes on claim drafting and figuring out what your invention is, I listened to those those first so you can see the forest for the trees, because this episode is pretty technical. So what is means plus function claiming? Let me give you an example. Let's say as part of your invention, you claim that two things were attached together using a certain connecting object. Let's say a board was connected to a pipe in your invention with a nail. So in your claims, you claim something like a device having a board, a pipe, and a nail that connects the board to the pipe. Now this is a logical claim. Uh, But if you listen to my podcast about claims being too narrow or too broad, then hopefully this jumps out as you as something potentially that it's something that someone could easily design around. What if someone used a screw to connect the two things or a bolt or a staple or glue or welded it? If they did those things, they wouldn't be infringing your patent because you claimed a nail connecting the board and the pipe. Now, it's possible you can still get them for infringement using the doctrine of equivalence, which I talked about in episode 76. But glue really isn't equivalent to a nail, even though they're both used to secure things together. It probably would be an uphill battle to say that glue and nail are equivalent things. And in the end, you don't really want to have to rely on the doctrine of equivalence. We want to get someone on a clean and simple direct infringement. Now, one way to avoid this is to try to list every type of connecting member that you can think of and put them in the claims. So you could say a device having a board, a pipe, and at least one of a nail, screw, bolt, glue, and staple that connects the board to the pipe. Now, that's one possibility, but maybe you're missing some things there too. And also, the claims might get really long if you're trying to put put in the kitchen sink. Now, another way to do it is claiming the function. And this is where the means plus function comes in. Instead of claiming a physical object, such as a nail, you put in your claims a board, a pipe, and a means for connecting the board and pipe together. Now, when you word it like that, you really cover everything. And this sounds pretty simple, right? Just claim your invention in a functional way, not in a physical objects way. Now, technically, you are allowed to do this. It's in section 35 USC 112F. And people used to draft claims like this all the time. But then the court started to look not too fondly on this kind of claiming and said that if you use this kind of language in claiming somewhere in your specification, that's the written part of the written description part of your application, you have to say what the structures are that can accomplish the means. So if you wrote in your claims a means for connecting a board to a pipe, but nowhere in your description of the invention did you even mention that uh, that it could be uh, that you gave examples such as a screw or a nail, then you're going to get Uh, a rejection for indefiniteness. So if you still want to use means plus function language, you can make your claim simple and use it. But then in your description, you'll want to say something like a variety of members can be used for the means of connecting a board to a pipe, such as a nail, a screw, a bolt, uh, glue, and a staple. Now, if you do that, then your claim shouldn't get rejected for indefiniteness. And your claim covers all the structures and the equivalence of those structures that you disclosed in your specification. Now, the court is supposed to use the broadest reasonable interpretation of what those means are. So if you use the phrase means for, or it's a, a method, and if it's a method claim, it's called steps for, and it's functional language, you'll want to make sure that you have some structure or some specific step described in your specification that can be used uh, for those means or steps. There's another way around the problem of means plus function. What if instead of saying means for connecting the board to the pipe, I said a connecting member to connect the board to the pipe? Now, it sounds like the same thing, right? A connecting member to do something is really just the same thing as saying a means means to connect. 
Now, the good news is that if you use the term connector member or connector element in this case, it doesn't trigger that same requirement that you have to disclose all the types of connecting members in the specification. It's like those words means for are magic triggering words. And if you're going to put in a structure like connecting member or connecting elements or connector element, even though that might sound really vague, you're actually safer doing that. Now, if you do do that in your claims, I would still list a bunch of connecting members in the description to be safe, but technically it doesn't trigger that section 112F, which is specifically about means plus function language. Now, there could be other language that technically doesn't use the word means, so you might want to be a little bit careful about uh, using terms such as mechanisms for, or elements for, machine for, or device for. There can be a lot of gray zones, so regardless of how you claim your invention, I'd still put in example structures in your application. And it's not just me saying that it's risky. If you look at the stats in the 1970s, over half of patents had means plus function language. Now it's down to around 5%. So it's something that patent attorneys generally avoid these days. And in replacing the words uh, means, people often will use configured to a lot. So I might say a connecting member configured to connect the board to a pipe. It's pretty similar to having the same purpose as means plus function without automatically triggering it. There are other terms that people like to use, like adapted to, or capable of, or designed to. And each of these has pros and cons to whether it's a good term to use. What's going to be important is whether, whether the person having ordinary skill in the art would read that language and think of that language as denoting a specific kind of structure or not. There are all kinds of cases where the courts have had to decide whether it was a means plus function claim or not. And I'm not going to go into all these details, but there are some exceptions to what I've told you about whether means does or doesn't trigger that section. So nothing's 100% either way, but use that language at your own risk. Also, if you're doing software and computer patents, there's lots of nuance that you have to think about with these uh, means plus function language that, that I'm not really going into in, into this episode. So people like to have some claims um, with means plus function language and then other claims with actual physical structures to cover all their bases, which might be a good approach. Basically, you're, you're doing both types of claiming. For me personally, I avoid means plus function almost all the time, and you should never only have means plus function language. I don't see a good reason to even want to trigger the examiner into giving me a rejection, so I'll use other language, uh, but then I'll treat the written description as if I had used means plus function language by including a whole bunch of physical structures as possible variations. That way, if the examiner does think that I triggered section 112F, my specification still provides support for it. If you want help with your patent application, trademarks, copyrights, responding to rejections, appeals, or anything else related to your invention, you can contact me directly through my website at diamondspatentlaw.com, that's D-I-A-M-E-N-T, patentlaw.com, or email me at adam at diamondpatentlaw.com, or call me at 424-281-0162. I'm Adam Diamond, and until next time, keep on inventing. Thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with host Adam Diamond. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review on iTunes. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only. The facts of every legal matter are unique and the content of this podcast should not be construed as offering legal advice for your specific legal situation. For more information and help with your own intellectual property needs, contact Adam Diamond at patentingforinventors.com. That's patentingforinventors.com or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. The preceding information may be considered an attorney advertisement and does not establish any attorney-client relationship.